Hi everyone, this is Planetary Rose. Now I'm going to continue on talking about the alien races and starting with Syrians. <clears throat> Apparently the home of humans of a rather empirical nature, possibly under reptilian influence, who have been tied in with events on Terra for centuries, including alliances with their counterpart serpent cults or illuminated secret societies on and beneath the earth, allegedly the source of many of the human, parahuman, cybernated and or chameleon men in black or MIB entities that have been encountered in connection to UFO incidents. The next one is Leviathans or Saurian sea serpents such as the so-called Loch Ness Monster. Loch Ness has been the site of much occult or paranormal activity, including UFO activity, gray sightings, etc. Aleister Crowley, the Satanist Illuminist, founder of the OTO or Ordo Templi Orientis, claimed to be in contact with the beast of the Loch. He owned a mansion on the shores of the loch, and this same mansion later became the residence of the British occultist Jimmy Page, who not only played with the British rock group Led Zeppelin, but also owned a large bookstore dealing with witchcraft and the occult. Being aquatic in nature and having lost the use of their limbs via atrophic atrophication mutation, this branch of the serpent race is allegedly used for long-range psychic warfare and occult manipulation of the human race. Wow. You know, and just think of that movie, too, called Le Leviathan. And you know how they make movies pretty much stating the truth, but people think it's fake. You know, they think, it's, they think these things are fake, but a lot of these, like... Um, sci-fi movies and horror movies and so forth are are really stating a lot of truthful facts of what they're doing so um that's just a side note all right here we go we're on to moon eyes a race of peaceable humans some seven to eight feet tall with pale blue skin and large wraparound eyes which are extremely sensitive to light they may be the same as the large human humans allegedly encountered on the moon by our astronauts, according to John Lear and others, who in turn were silenced and not allowed to tell what they saw. These people may, according to some accounts, be, be allied to the Nordics and or the Blondes. They claim to be descendants of Noah, who traveled to the Western Hemisphere a few centuries after the deluge and discovered ancient antediluvian cavern systems and technologies which have been abandoned in the subterranean recesses. They have been encountered mostly in deep cavern systems beneath the general region of the Ozarks, Arkansas. Arkansas. I always say Arkansas and then people correct me. Okay, so I guess it's Arkansas. <laughs> and surrounding regions. Uh, so, the next one is Ikeels, small hairy humanoids with cloven hooves which inhabit deep caverns beneath South America and elsewhere. They may be members of a fallen pre-Adamic race which possessed angelic, animal, and humanoid characteristics, now allied with the reptilians. They have been known, according to the natives, to kidnap women and children down through the ages, and many stories are told of South American tribes who have battled these creatures with machetes during certain of their uh, forays to the surface. The next one is Anakin, also referred to Els, the short for Elder Race or simply as the giants. Referred to in ancient Hebrew tradition, this race is allegedly tied in with ancient humans who broke off from mainstream humanity 
because of their vast size, which had developed over the centuries, possibly as a result of a genetic anomaly. They are said to range anywhere from 9 to 11, and in some cases 12 feet in height, although in configuration are remarkably similar to international humans. They have allegedly been encountered in deep and extensive cavern systems from Alaska to Mexico, and are believed to have interstellar traveling capabilities. The Greys, small neosoroid race, very prolific and intelligent, may be the brains or intellect of the serpent race, whereas the larger reptoids allegedly act as the physical overlords, and thus are of a higher ranking than the Greys. The greys are reportedly very predatory and insensitive to humans, and like other reptilian entities, they allegedly feed off of human fluids by rubbing the protein formula on their bodies, which is then absorbed into the skin. And like snakes, the waste is excreted back through the skin. The greys range from three and a half to four and a half feet tall, on the average, with, this, with skin colors ranging from grayish white to grayish blue to grayish green, aside from feeding off of human proteins and fluids, they also allegedly feed off the life energy, vital essence, or soul energy of humans, as do other reptilian species. This is why those humans seen working with the greys implanted drones, whether willingly or unwillingly, have appeared lifeless and emotionless to the, to the witnesses who observed them. The greys are allegedly extremely deceitful, and although they act on logic, to them it is logical to use extremely complex forms of deception to bring about their goals. They are the most commonly observed alien entity during UFO encounters. The hybrids. Since human and reptilian beings are allegedly so different in their physical makeup, a natural hybrid between the two is impossible. However, an unnatural genetic alteration, in essence splicing human and reptilian genes, has allegedly been attempted. Even if this were accomplished, the offspring would not be an actual hybrid half human, half reptilian, but would fall to one side or the other. Since reptilians possess no soul matrix as humans do, no, they do possess soul, and operate on a collective consciousness level, the hybrid would be human or reptilian, depending on whether it was born with or without a soul. No, it will be born with a soul. They do have souls. They're not clones. So this this is the difference. Um, these these are reptilians. They have souls. No matter how demoniac they are, they've got a soul. But what doesn't have soul? Because there there are soulless beings, and those are the robotic created clones. The ones that don't even have a human heart. They don't have. They have a robotic brain that are controlled from a distance. And they, they replace, like, celebrities and things like that. Any Anywhere where there's a lot of com commercialism and money-making, they use a lot of these underground clones. And the clones don't have souls. That's where the soulless thing comes in. But as far as these demons and, and alien races, they all have souls. So don't be fooled by this talk they're saying about soulless Matrix crap. I don't buy that. All right, so here we go. Next. Okay. Uh, in most cases, one might tell the difference if the entity had round pupils as opposed to black, opaque, or vertical slit pupil eyes or five-digit fingers as opposed to three or four or external genitalia as opposed to none. Mm. All right, next one. Who? Brid? 
hybrid. Hybrids through genetic manipulation who possess a human soul. Okay. Um, then there's rebrid. These are also hybrids. Some of these may possess human-like genetic coding. Um, let's see what else. Let's keep going. Dracones. Largely subterranean um, um, pterodactyloid-like hominoids with bat-like wings, sometimes described as possessing horns and thus are considered very similar to the traditional depiction of the devil, according to certain individuals who have encountered them. Very intelligent and extremely malignant, sometimes referred to as moth mothmen, although that title might be a little misleading. Next one is dwarfin. Diminutive humans who have allegedly been encountered in or near caverns in various parts of the world and in some cases on UFOs, although most dwarf sightings in connection to UFOs are actually sightings of the Saurian Greys. These should not be confused with the small elementals or na nature spirits, which some believe are etheric in nature yet have the ability to appear in solid or semi-solid forms form as times. Some of these were apparently involved in the original rebellion of the Angelics against the Creator after being deceived and misled by the former Archangel turned egocentric tyrant Lucifer. Others of the elementals may have escaped this fall. The Dwarfin or Dwarf races are allegedly just as human as surface peoples but average between uh, to three to four feet in height, although at times they have been seen as small as two feet. As with the giants or elves, this may have resulted in a genetic anom anomaly which ran its course due to the separation of their races from the international gene pool. They allegedly live in subterranean systems to a large extent as a protective measure. And as we've said, some allegedly possess aerial disk technology, and some might even have attempted interplanetary or interstellar travel. The dwarf races is very interesting, and I, this might be connected with some of the elves. Um, and uh, yeah, there's many different types of those dwarf races. So, next one is synthetics, aha. Uh -huh. Well, here we go. Now, this is something that, in my opinion, would not have a soul. So, let's see what this says. Of several different types and varieties, although reptilians and humans apparently utilize artificial intelligence, devices, or organisms, technology itself being amor amoral, neither good nor evil, the draconians, as well as some controlled humans, have apparently developed biosynthetic or mechanical entities. That's what they are, mechanical entities, as extensions of their activities. This is especially true with the biosynthetic cybernetic creatures which the reptilians have allegedly created via organs stolen from animal and human mutilation victims. The synthetics are of many types, some of which are very human-like and which may be used as infiltrators. Others apparently look more like the gray entities created after their own image, so to speak, yet are not reptilian but instead a type of molded entity form containing a sponge-like substance which uh, permeates the interior. They may be the worst of all, as they are apparently biogenetic forms which are able to be inhabited, possessed by the infernals, or fallen supernaturals, as containers, enabling them to operate in the physical realm, possibly to the extent, extent of performing mutilations, etc., without the help of their reptilian allies. 
Uh, so let me state this in a more simplistic way. So these synthetics, they have no soul. They're, they're like, um, what did they say here? Mechanical entities. So they're basically, they have, uh, you know, different um, body parts put together, but they're, they're like, you know, I don't know, you know, exactly how it works, but their, their brains is like a computer brain and they're, they're operating in a very mechanical type of way, even though they got some human type body parts and stuff like that. And, and because they're soulless like that and they're soulless entities, so then these demon spirits, the demons, reptilians, draconians, uh, who, whichever races, want to come and enter and possess such a uh, body, can possess it and control it, and then use it for whatever purposes uh, they can they can do. So you will see that uh, sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes there will be uh, a synthetic used for a, a pop star singer and but to more empower to empower this synthetic they will have a demon spirit enter like a reptilian <clears throat> enter into this body and then it can perform on stage with much more vigor and do the most you know demoniac things to corrupt the minds of children and uh, that's really how how it's used like that because with a synthetic without being possessed by the evil spirit um, will be a little more uh, not having as much personality but to really fire up fire up the personality they will they'll have the demon spirit enter like that so anyhow this you you hear like those various um pop star pop stars are like britney spears or whoever i don't know there's there's other ones but they have like you know their on stage uh performer's name that they split into a different personality and they have their on stage name that's the demon spirit so okay continuing ava borgs cybernetic forms controlled by human entities or humans who have been implanted or surgically altered to an extent that they have become cybernetic in nature yet still retaining a soul a soul okay matrix all right now the draco borgs cybernetic forms controlled by reptilian entities these would also include those forms which are animated by fallen supernatural or paraphysical entities, whether of gray, human-like, mechanical, or other configuration. There are some who suggest that human-appearing infiltrators of this type may exist in our society, and that certain characteristics might give them away, for example, the eyes, a slightly sulfurous smell, unrefined features such as no fingerprints or ears or other body parts which seem to have a slight artificial appearance. So this is quite interesting, the Dracoborgs. Um, <clears throat> so let me, let me think about this for a second cybernetic forms controlled by reptilian entities and they have the human appearing mm -hmm, infiltrators of this type may exist in our society yes i've encountered some of those before okay um all right next one is the mibs also referred to as the men in black or horlocks these are apparently, in many cases, humans who are controlled by draconian influences, although other MIB have been encountered which do not seem human, but more reptilian or synthetic. The MIB have been encountered often after UFO sightings, 
usually intimidating witnesses into keeping silent about what they've seen. Many of the witnesses may be abductees with suppressed memories of the, in, of the event. Their threats appear to be motivated by attempts to utilize terrorism, fear, or intimidation as a psychological weapon against witnesses. This weapon may not only be used to keep the human MIB under control, but by the human MIB themselves. They are often, though not always, seen in connection with large black automobiles, some of which have been disappearing into mountains, canyons, or tunnels, or in some cases apparently appear out of or disappear cloak into thin air. Most human MIB have probably been implanted by the draconians and are essentially their slaves. Biosynthetic infernals, infernals also seem to play a part in the MIB scenario, as do subterranean and exterran societies. Sirius, at only nine plus light years away, has been identified as a major exterran MIB center of activity with a subterranean uh, counterpart existing in ancient antediluvian Ant Atlantean underground complexes which have been re-established beneath the eastern U.S. seaboard. Okay, now we're on to dragon worms. These creatures are largely subterranean and have been reported on very rare occasions, although a mutation of the serpent race which lost the use of its limbs through centuries of atrophication, it is nevertheless apparently a part of the reptilian conspiracy. The dragon worms are allegedly very intelligent, according to according so certain to certain sources. They have sometimes been described as appearing similar to a giant worm or slug. Oh gosh, a giant slug. Now that's just something that one hopes to never encounter. Um, let's see how much further we have here. Agarians, okay. Just gonna see how much more we have if we need to do a part three on this. Yes, I believe we do need to do a part three. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here as this is part two, and then we will be back with talking about Agarians.